beach fishing, why twilight is a must time to fish. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. I'm back down at the beach and I'm fishing one of my favourite times, which is that period just before dark. And in this video, I'm going to be teaching you everything that I'm doing and explaining why it's such a crucial time to fish. Also, I'm going to go through my rigs, my rods, my reels, and I caught some beautiful fresh bait today that I'll be using in this video. If you're enjoying my videos and learning, please make some comments and also subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. Let's get started with today's video. I've decided to fish in this sheltered location this afternoon. It's actually blowing a really strong nor'easter, but I've opted to actually cast into the wind because the weather forecast says that it's going to drop just before dark, which it often does. Rather than fishing on some of the open beaches, which are really quite messy, there's some reasonable water, but also I, I've fished here a few times before. I caught a mulloway here recently, and I'm just gonna have some lovely baits out, out there fishing this beautiful twilight time. So I'm gonna get started with my fishing. It's still a little while before, I'm here a little bit early, so it's nice pretty relaxed, not in a rush. I'll have a little bit of a fish, but I'm looking forward to being set up for that prime time as the sun sets between that sunset time and when it gets dark. So many fish come on the bite at that time. And it's a well-known fact that that's a great time to fish for Mulloway as well. So I've got a pilchard on to start off with. I've actually got three baits with me. I brought a few pilchards, but I caught a couple of lovely squid a couple of hours ago and also pulled a few beach worms. So I've got those, my main baits are fresh squid and beach worm. And I'm gonna be using two rods. Very windy, blowing the sand around everywhere. Actually, there's so many blue bottles. Um, I went for a little walk down into the water a minute ago and the blue bottles are littered all over the beach and they're just being washed through the waves and they've got really long stingers, like two meters long. So I'm going to have to be careful when I walk out into the water and cast. And I think later, I'm not going to stand in the water, I'm going to stand up on the beach because I really want to avoid those blue bottles. So while I'm down here, man, I, um, I don't particularly want to get stung. Like you can, I'm not sure if you can see here, this one here, I'm going to put my foot next to it. Its stinger goes like all the way down here. And the one next to it also has got a really long stinger as well. A lot of them are like that. But fortunately, in this particular spot, I don't have to cast very far, so that's a bonus. One of the other reasons I've, I'm fishing right up in the corner is literally only 50 metres or 100 metres down the beach, there's a lot of weed. So I could have potentially fished down that way, but I wanted to avoid the weed, so I've come up here to get out of the weed, and I'm looking forward to when the wind drops a little bit later. I noticed this wave out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> so I've got to keep my eyes open. So I'm going to whack this pilly out. I just need to watch, keep a, have a look in the water because I did see a lot of blue bottles before. I can't see any just here. Because they're not actually massive blue bottles, it would be easy for them to hide in the white water but they do have a long stinger. So, certainly want to avoid that. So really just got out behind those breaking waves. The wind is a bit of a hindrance when you're casting a big bait into the wind. Believe it or not, I, um, you know, I forgot to bring my rod spikes or my sand spikes, my rod holders. Which really means obviously I can really only hold one rod. So what I've done is I've put my bucket, I've buried it in the sand and I can sit a rod in there. <laughs> so that's really a bit of improvisation. So I've got that pilchard out on that rod and it's fine, it's not going to go anywhere. So <laughs> that's my very rough method of securing a beach rod because I don't have any sand spikes. 
So we'll see how we go with that. I have a 5,000 size spinning reel on this rod, which is spooled with 15 pound line monofilament. This is actually kind of my, well, really what I'd call a light beach fishing rod. It's rated four to seven kilos and it's 10 feet long. I've been using this particular rod for about three, the last three years, and I really love it. It's a fantastic rod, it's super light. You know, it, it would actually really be good for ladies because it's not heavy. You're not holding onto a big heavy fishing rod. Um, and I've landed a lot of fish with it. The rig that I'm using on this rod is one that I use a lot. It is a two hook rig, but I actually have my star sinker and I have a bait, a leader with a hook below the star sinker. So I don't have the star sinker on the bottom with my hooks up above it. I've got one, I've got the star sinker coming down to a swivel. And then, so essentially one of my baits is just sitting on the bottom and just wafting around on the bottom. And then about two feet above it, I have a three-way swivel with another long shank hook. So essentially I've got one bait that is suspended a couple of feet up in the water and one bait that is wafting around on the bottom. And I do use this rig a lot. I think it's a good method to have a bait that's on the bottom and also a bait that is up off the bottom as well. Sometimes when I'm fishing I catch most of the fish on the top hook. They seem to be swimming, swimming up higher. Other times when I'm fishing I catch nearly all the fish on the bottom hook. So it's really good to have, you know, be employing both of those tactics. Now I'm going to bait this up with some uh, fresh beach worm. You can see actually the sinker is free running between the two hooks. So I have a, I have a swivel with a bead at the bottom. So you can see the, the sinker swings down. There's a luminous bead just above the swivel to protect the knot then the sinker is free running for about two feet up until the three-way swivel. So I've just baited this rig up with two worm baits. At least with the worm baits tossing into the wind we'll be okay. I just saw a fish jump in the water actually. I'm just standing here looking at this situation and I'm on a sand spit where there's an island beyond it. I've got weather coming from the north and the tide's coming in at low tide, you can walk all the way across. But because the, the weather's coming from the north, the water is washing north to south. There's actually a current coming through this little channel and it's stirring it up and going into this little area over here. And my thinking is that that could be washing food through this little channel and there could be fish waiting over there where it's coming into the other side. So. I actually would like to have a cast over there because it's the sort of spot that whiting could be hanging around looking for something to eat. Especially when you've got a natural flow and I can see the sand being stirred up there. So while I'm intending to cast out into the wind, I think I might have one cast over there first. And I did notice when I walked over here before, all the blue bottles are on the windy side and there's no blue, no, blue, no blue bottles just here anyway on the shore. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can see fish there. I'm not sure if you can see, if you guys can see on the camera, but there's actually quite a torrent of water washing through here and stirring up there. I saw a fish splash and also I just saw a bird fly in and land there. So I'm going to toss my bait in that general area. I'm pretty sure there's no blue bottles just here. Yeah, that's going to do it. Yep, I landed right at the end of that turbulence. I reckon there'll be fish there. And they might like a worm. It's going to tighten my drag just a little bit. See, there's a bird that's dipping down. There must be some bait fish out there. I mean, the water itself is very clear. It's kind of, you'd look at it and think that it's too clear. But, you always have to try and have a look and see because you can be surprised very often. If I don't get a bite just there, 
I'm going to try going to the right just a little bit. With the tide coming in, I think it probably would be good in this little spot just on dark because while the water is crystal clear and it's not all that deep, I reckon fish would definitely move in here with the tide. I haven't had any bites straight away, which often happens. So I'm actually tempted to pull it in and toss it a bit to the, a little bit further to the right, to the end of the turbulence, I think. So I'm going to wind my line in. I'm not going to just let it sit there and cast it into a slightly different spot. And just see if that makes much difference. Yeah, that's sort of going where I want it to go. Yeah, we'll give that a go. There's a bit of a sandbar out there. And then there's a slight kind of ledge near, near the sandbar. I just about landed on that sandbar. I'm going to pull it back towards me where it just drops off into slightly deeper water. We'll see if there's anything sniffing around. So I had a couple of casts, just two casts, in that little spot. And I didn't get a single bite within about five or six minutes. So I'm not going to continue. But at least I've eliminated that as a possible option. And you don't know, I could have caught a couple of nice fish over there. I actually think that probably will be okay as the sun disappears. But I, I'm going to inc basically focus my efforts into the wind. I apologise if some of the shots are a bit wonky, but we're just both really having to watch where we walk with all these blue bottles. They're everywhere. And I'm trying to keep my eye in the water to see if I can see any washing in on the waves, which I have seen a few before. I don't want to get secretly nabbed. Okay, well I'm happy with where I landed. So I've decided to walk up the beach a bit away from the blue bottles. And even if I hook a fish, I'm not going to walk down there. <laughs> I'll just pull it in and drag it up the sand. Unless it happened to be something really big, then I'd make the sacrifice. But I want to stay up above the blue bottle zone. Now, why is twilight such a crucial time to fish? I mean, it's a well-known fact that periods of low light are very good for fishing. And I've done a fair bit of spear fishing and spent a fair bit of time in the water, and it's amazing how first thing in the morning before the sun rises, when you've just got that first light, how active the fish are and what you see under the water. And it's the same thing late in the afternoon. Once the sun gets low, once it goes beyond the horizon, the fish just seem to come out from all of their hiding places. And hang on, something's going on with my line. Yeah, I'm getting a bite. I think I might lay into it. Yeah, I've got something. Oh yeah, look at that. It's, it's bumping its head like a brim what it feels like. It's coming in pretty easily now. So I'm still standing up above the blue bottles. Here it comes. Actually it's a lovely brim. It's quite a big one. Well that's a solid brim that. It's flicking the sand around. I'll just grab it. Oops. I'm sure you understand sometimes fish aren't easy to grab a hold of. Look at that, he's a beautiful fish. Now he took the bottom hook, so that's the bait that's just lying, that bit of worm that's just lying naturally on the sand bottom is what he took. My line was actually only in the water for maybe two or three minutes. So there's a bit of a contrast between casting out here as, as opposed to on the other side, so I'm going to uh, quickly dispatch this guy and toss my line straight back out again. See, I just removed my hook from that brim, and look, I've got my whole bait, the whole worm back again. So I'm actually going to not touch that. I notice also that half of the worm on my top hook is missing, so it had a bite as well. Well, I better put a bit more worm on. I've got some lovely fresh squid, so in a little while, when the sun gets a little bit lower, I'm gonna put some squid on my other rod. 
see these worms. I always have plenty of sand on the worms because otherwise they're almost impossible to hold. They wriggle around so much. You know, because these are, these are only caught not long ago, so they're very lively. So I pull that up the hook. Just put a nice big worm bait on. I've actually fed that right up onto the line. And that's gonna, man, he's a tough worm, that one. All right, time to dodge the blue bottles again. And get it back out there. One thing I'm looking at is that when these waves wash up here, there's so many blue bottles along the edge that they could cut, they could hit me from behind. So I've got to keep my eye out for that. There's one right here. In fact, I can see like, I can see heaps. So I've got one just to my left. There's three just there. Wow, that's, that's hectic. It didn't quite land in the same spot as last time. I think I cast out a bit further last time. Still, that will, I'm pretty sure that'll be fine. When I get a bite, if possible, I like to be able to try and cast back in the same spot because I figure them it's probably a school of fish there. So I didn't quite land in the same spot then. Now, I was mentioning before when I got that bite that that period of low light, especially when the sun start to, starts to disappear like now, when you're out in the water, it's amazing how the fish come out. They come out from everywhere. It's also pretty eerie because, you know, you always think there could be sharks out there, etc. But it's a well-known fact that at this time, generally you get more bites. I do a lot of fishing off the beach during the day and in the mornings and have a lot of fun and catch fish. But probably the great majority of my fishing sessions are in this period, really like about an hour before dark until about half an hour or so after dark. I spend a lot of time fishing then. And in the last couple of weeks, I've landed a few juvenile mulloway and they've all been caught exactly at that time. Really after the sun has disappeared while there's still a little bit of light. And I've experienced that in previous years as well, catching other mulloway. It's not the only time that you catch mulloway, but certainly around that dark is a very good time. I think I'm getting another bite. Well, my line just went slack. Hang on, yeah, I am. Yeah, got a fish. My line went totally slack, which meant the fish was swimming towards me. Okay, well, I wasn't out there for too long. We'll see what this is. It hasn't fought like a brim. It doesn't mean it won't be a brim, but... Actually, it's quite a big whiting. Look at that. My goodness. Look at the size of that guy. He is an absolute beast, this whiting. Look at the size of his head. Now, that's... That's what you call a really quality sand whiting. He would be 10, 20, 30. He'd probably be 40 centimetres long, that guy. He's a nice fish. He took the worm that the brim rejected and gave back. <laughs> Two fish on one bait. That's pretty cool. We had fish for dinner last night, actually. It was so good. We had brim and whiting. I did them just in a panko crumb. Oh, mate, we, we just woofed them. So we need a few more. Well, I, um, that whiting, I didn't get the worm back, so I got two fish from that one bait. Really, a big brim and a big whiting. Now, I get a lot of people asking me about which location that I'm at when I'm fishing. And real, I fish a lot of different places off the beach, but you know what, really? It doesn't really matter, because the principles that I'm teaching you apply to wherever you may be when I used to live in Sydney, I had wonderful time fishing off the beaches there, catching a lot of fish, and it's the most populated city in Australia. There's people everywhere. So really, what I'm teaching you, you can apply, you know, whether you're in Queensland, Victoria, New South Wales, even in other places around the world, 
these tactics would work in your beaches. I've had a lot of people actually reaching out from the USA saying they've had some success um, fishing off the beach there using some of the techniques that I use. I don't always mention where I'm fishing. Sometimes I like to do that just out of respect for the local people. But most of my fishing is done in very public places on the beach where you see heaps of people usually. Although tonight, I'm the only one here. <laughs> and it's a very popular beach. Keeping my eyes open all the time. <laughs> I just want to pinch a couple of metres. Walk out into the water. Just watching out for those little sailing boats that come in. Yeah, it didn't really get out all that far, but just beyond the wave breaking waves. But wouldn't mind getting out a little bit further. Although it hasn't seemed to matter the last couple of casts. Just looking down. But it's just getting to that time now. The sun has literally just disappeared. So I'll probably put a squid bait out on my other rod any minute. Now it was a good point catching that bigger whiting. Hang on, I'm getting a bite. Just going to wait and see what happens. That's swimming towards me now. Wow, it's swimming right in towards me. Yeah, I got it. That was even quicker that time. Well, this is great. We'll see what this is, if it's another whiting or a brim. Oh, it's another cracking whiting. Not quite as big as the last one, but still a really nice fish really good quality eating whiting well over the 30 centimeter mark probably about oh that's probably about high 30s probably and he's woofed that bit of worm better get this back out there in a hurry I think I got my bait back again alrighty I think I'll pull my other rod in and put some squid on, actually. Just got to wash my hands. So I'm winding my other line in, I'm going to put some squid on. But something I'd like to point out is that from my experience, very often I catch bigger whiting just before dark and after dark in that twilight period. And certainly that's happening just now. There's some quality whiting out there. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've got some ganged hooks on my line. I'm actually going to put some fresh squid on the ganged hooks, which is not what I normally do, but really I'm just doing it so I don't have to re-rig and do another rig. So I have this squid that I caught earlier. I caught a couple of squid. This is the smaller one of the squid that I caught. You can see that guy. Look how beautiful is he. You can see the green, amazing colours in their eyes. So I'm actually just going to cut his head off like that. He's already dead. And I might, um, just thinking about what I'm going to do, I mean, that's going to be delectable to, to a fish. I might actually get two baits out of that head. I might slice that down the middle. And then I've got really two halves. You've, you've got the whole candle. A squid has two candles. That's a candle, apart from its, um, you know, its tentacles. So each half of the squid head is identical really it has each half has a candle on it so many fish would love that it'll probably be a little bit rough putting it on the ganged hooks but I don't think it matters too much so long as the squids on there and I've got a couple of barbs exposed something will want to nail that I'm not really too fussed about how I'm going to do this I just got to get the eye the hooks into it I'm going to put the candle of the hook on the end gang hook then I'll probably put that gang hook through there and this one through the top part of the squid head so really it's um now look at that there's a whole barb sticking out in the middle and one hooks buried down there I might actually bring um, 
this tentacle up and put it on that barb like that. So that's really like a cocktail of squid <laughs> and hooks. And I'm going to belt that out there and I'm going to stick it in my bucket rod holder <laughs> and I think I'll set the drag pretty light because if something nails it I don't want the whole lot to just go flying. Just before I cast this out I've really just got a star sinker on the bottom and just one a fixed dropper off a swivel just up just above that. It's a very basic very basic simple rig. Okie doke. I can see there's been some people out fishing on the island but now the tides come in they've got to wade their way back over. Someone's piggybacking someone across the channel. What a classic. <laughs> wow that looks pretty hectic. Get out of the water. <laughs> well, he did well. He piggybacked. No, it's his son, I think. I'll walk back over here with my rod. I reckon if there's some big brim out there, they would probably nail that squid. But I'm really hoping for a mulloway with this squid. That's what I want to catch. Good job. <laughs> Okay, so I've chucked my squid out. I've got to keep a really close eye on that because that is a beautiful bait. And anything could nail that. And you can see the, um, the moon coming up. It's actually a full moon in four nights time. So we've got a series of high tides right on dark, which, which is good. All right, I'm going to whack this out. Looking out for blue bottles. All righty. I didn't see any blue bottles then. I've had three casts with these worms out here and I've landed three quality fish. It didn't take too long to get bites and really now is that beautiful twilight time. It's amazing. Fantastic time to be fishing so I'm very expectant you know over the next half an hour to an hour. It's exciting because anything's possible and you put yourself in a position to catch fish you're gonna do well. Yep, getting another bite. It didn't take too long then, I'm just waiting. Could have struck then. Yeah, something's going on. Just waiting to really feel the weight of the fish. Or for it to either swim out or swim towards me. Yeah, swimming towards me now. Oh, maybe I missed it. Yeah, I did. It actually swam towards me, but I should have waited a bit longer. It had been uh, biting on my top hook because half of the bait on my top hook is missing. But I think I might take the opportunity to recast my squid bait out, I think. I'd like to get it out just a little bit further. So I'm going to put this down for a second and grab my squid line. That actually felt like a white whiting, they felt like whiting bites before. It'd be interesting to see if any of that squid's been taken. I didn't haven't noticed any bites. We'll wait and see. I just want to get this squid out past the drop-off. What's it look like? Oh no, looking, looking very good actually. Look at that, something is gonna love that. I'm gonna walk to the side a bit where I can just get out a little bit further and get it out the back. 
hopefully the um, the blue bottles are dissipating a little bit. And that wind is still really strong, so it's yeah, it's hard to get much further than that into the wind. Actually, we'll leave it there. Probably prefer it to be out a little bit further, but that's uh, that's okay. I can definitely cast these worms further than a big bait, especially in the wind anyway. If it wasn't so windy, I'd, I'd be getting more distance. Alrighty, here we go. Give it a big whack. That's pretty good. Yep, something's going on. It's swimming towards me. Swimming towards me again. Yeah, got it this time. It may look like I strike really hard, but oftentimes there's slackness in the line and monofilament has a fair bit of stretch. I just want to make sure that I set the hook. And this rod is very light and whippy as well. Here we go, here comes another fish. Oh, ripper. There's another big brim. I just pulled him up through the blue blue bottle mat. Another really nice fish. Not quite as big as the last brim. This guy didn't swallow the hook. So I can remove it pretty easily. I've got nearly all my bait back. I'll just put a little bit more worm on and chuck it back out again. I just noticed that my rod that has the squid on it has gone completely slack. So I'm going to tighten the drag a little bit and see what the story is. No, there's nothing on there, but the line was just totally loose. So something grabbed it and swam in with it a bit. Hang on, there's a little bit of weight on there, but I don't think I've got a fish. Maybe it was just the weight of the sinker and the squid. Oh, look at that. Would you believe that? A baby flathead. I'm sure that that flathead didn't take all of that squid. No way. All of the squid's gone. And there's just a baby flathead on there. Just caught on one of the hooks. Now... I don't particularly want to get nailed by him. I'm going to hold him. Oh, there you go, I got him off. <laughs> Let him go. That was unusual. Every ounce of that squid is gone. There's no way that little flathead would have taken all that squid. So I had that whole squid bait taken by something and it didn't hook up. But we're going to whack on another bit, the other half of the squid head with its eye and all the, all the goodies. We'll whack that, we'll whack, whack this guy on. Alrighty, I'll chuck it back out again. Look at that moon. I reckon if a Mulloway grabbed this, he'd just swallow the whole thing. One big woof and it'd be gone. Alrighty, I've waited out a little bit this time. Yeah, that's a better cast. Yep. I think the blue bottles have thinned out a little bit. I want to get another bait out there as quickly as I can because the brim and whiting are going really well. They're good quality fish, nice big ones. Beautiful. Yeah, the tide's come up quite a lot actually. And I can't, I don't know what's happened to the blue bottles, but they seem to have moved on. I've really only just landed out there and I'm getting bites on the worm. I'm making sure that I stand right beside my other rod. 
because if I get a big run on that, I want to be ready. I haven't noticed anything yet, not that I've been watching it every second. I think under these conditions, it's well, well worthwhile fishing till after dark, till it's fully dark. It's a beautiful evening. The wind will be, it's, it's starting to abate a little bit. Hang on. Had a couple of knocks. Yep. Yep. Oops. Yep, I've got him. It's hard to tell sometimes what's going on. We'll see if it's another brim or another whiting. It's not that big, I don't think. It's a small brim. That's why the bite was just a little bit fiddly, because it's just a little one. And he's only caught in the lip, but he's nailed. He's nailed that worm bait. So I will quickly put him in the water and put another bait on. That hit it really hard then, so I laid into it. Oh, I got it now. I think it's another small brim, actually. Maybe the small school has moved in. No, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Exactly what it is. It's a repeat of the last fish. An unders undersized brim. And he's also only lipped, so I will put him back in to fight another day. So that's two small brim in two casts, actually. So I'd like to see the big ones come back again. Just rebaiting, putting a bit more worm back on. These worms are pretty chunky, quite big. So the light is fading now. I have something, yeah. Not sure what it is, it could be another small brim. Got a little bit more fight in it. Yeah, it feels good. It's got a bit more substantial than the last one. Last two, which is good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's a better fish. So this is brim keeper number three, which is great. Nice fish. So I've got a lovely feed of fish so far. Okay, oh, man, they're strong. You've got to hold on to them tight. The dorsal spines are so sharp. You can see them here along the back. They really cause some damage if you get if you get spiked by those, so you've got to hold on to them really strong. Alrighty, oh, better get my line back out there. Three quality brim and two big whiting now, so fantastic. Still not dark yet. Let's see if we can add a different species to that. That was an interesting bite. It just really just pulled it hard for a minute. I thought I'm not going to strike yet. This is interesting. Yeah, I've got it. I don't think it's very big, though. It's hard to tell. Feels a bit like a brim again. So, there's obviously a lot of brim around. Where is he? Here he comes. Oh, no. Whiting. <laughs> I got that wrong, didn't I? Felt a bit like a brim. But another lovely whiting. So the whiting are keeping tally with the brim, although I've caught five brim and three whiting, so the whiting aren't quite keeping up with the brim. So I just look after this guy. So the worms, I've caught eight fish so far. 
and a baby flathead on the um, squid. Well, it just goes to show you what an amazing bait beachworms are. I've got some first class squid for bait. I've caught a little flathead on that, although we know how good squid is. But I've landed eight fish on the worms. I've thrown back two brim and I've kept three beautiful brim and, and some lovely whiting. Or three brim and three whiting. Wow, this has just swum straight towards me. I had a bite and my line went slack because it swam straight at me. It came towards me maybe one or two metres. But I haven't felt anything else, so I'm just waiting. I've got the trigger ready to go. Yeah, it's coming towards me again. Just moving around a bit out there. I'm just wanting to feel a bit of weight. Man, it's coming towards me more. What is going on? Yeah, I think now's the time. Yep, got him. Alright, let's see what we've got this time. Is it another whiting? Haven't caught any stingrays, that's good. Feels good, okay. Whoa! <laughs> the fish fell off, but it's too small anyway. It's just a little brim, so I'm gonna let him go. Just gonna take one of the flaps off the side of this squid I've got a sore thumb because I broke my finger, my thumbnail, so it's a little bit sore digging it in, trying to separate this and tear it off, but it looks a little bit rough. But that's a flap. It's not a big side flap because it's a relatively small squid. I might just stick my knife in there, separate it so I can get my hand in there. I'm going to whack a couple of these bits of squid back on those ganged hooks. Just take a little bit of the skin off to expose a bit, expose a bit more of the, um, the white flesh of the squid. I'm going to put this on the ganged hooks which are over here. Just one lovely little bit of tentacle left on there. I'm going to leave that on there and um, just put these um, flaps on like I would have pilchered really. I can't push that through. Put that on there. That's one flap. And I think I'll repeat the process for this piece of squid. It's a little bit slippery, but it'll work. Just get that hook in there. This will just be a, another big lovely lump of squid out there. There's something to, to nail. I've put my rod down that's got the worms on at the moment. I've just got that sitting there. I don't want to get, hang on, I'm getting bites. You can tell it's going like that. Well, we'll just have to let them do their own thing. And hopefully it's still there in a minute. Yeah, it's, it's really slack. Something's swam in with it. It's really strange. Yeah, I've got something. Yep, I think it's another brim. That's what it feels like. Let's see if I'm right this time. Yeah, he's a ripper. Oh. That's another really beautiful brim. Look at that. He's an absolute cracker. Stunning fish. It's another one fallen prey to the beachworms. Wow, I've got a wonderful feed of fish to take home. I'm very happy. I've just been waiting for my other rod to have a screaming run with that squid. But so far, nothing yet.
Yep. Come on. Okay, that fish yet again swam in with the bait. It seems to be what they're doing. I don't think it's that big. Here it comes. Okay, no, it's, it's a lovely whiting actually. It's a big after dark whiting. Look at the size of this whiting. He's a ripper. It's like, like I was saying, quite often after dark, you catch some big whiting. Well, it's almost dark. He's a cracking fish. So, so far, the worms versus the squid. I think it's worms, 11 fish, and squid, a baby flathead. Tonight, anyway. But it can change, it can vary from night to night. But the, certainly the worms have been very successful. Well, this has been an awesome session, really beautiful. The wind has dropped off a bit. It hasn't completely disappeared, but I've caught a heap of fish. When I say a heap, I've got, I'm taking home four beautiful big brim and four awesome whiting as well. So I've got eight beautiful eating fish. I've let a few fish go. Tonight, the worms have been the big winner, but overall I'm wrapped because I've got some beautiful eating fish and we love eating our fish, as you know. So thank you so much for washing, uh, washing. <laughs> I trust that you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon in the next one.